we have the UFOs. There are tons of urban legends surrounding Antarctica. In particular, it's thought that aliens once lived there after crashing into one of the mountains. From there, it's believed that they had their own secret base there. While in 2019, UFO hunter Scott Waring was on Google Maps looking at Antarctica from above when he spotted what he thought to be a UFO trapped under Antarctica's ice. According to Scott, he was looking over an island in Antarctica when he saw the craft. He said it was triangular in shape, has a hump in the middle, and it has a thicker edge. He believes that with global warming melting more and more of Antarctica, that the craft, which was once lodged in the ice, is slowly starting to reveal itself. But of course, no one has actually gone out to that spot to investigate what it might be. So it could just be ice, or it could be a real alien spacecraft. Now, I'm just a little concerned when that thing fully thaws. Like, I don't need no aliens coming back to life. No, thank you. In our ninth spot, we have the Loch Ness Monster. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up because you know what? It really helps us out. A couple of years ago, another man was on Google Maps when he saw what looked to be a big monster lurking in the water. It was this massive dark mass that had a lot of people terrified. But later it was debunked saying that it was just a bunch of rocks. But did you know that a real life Loch Ness monster did once roam Antarctica? Yeah, over the course of a number of expeditions, scientists have discovered fossilized remains of a massive creature. And they say it's unlike anything they have ever seen. These remains are over 70 million years old and are from a creature that would have weighed about 15 tons. Not only that, but this thing was massive. It was 36 feet long. Now, it's considered to be part of the Elasmosaurid family, but this thing is the largest of its kind ever found. In our eighth spot, we have the Blood Falls. Now, if you're visiting Antarctica, this for sure would give you a heart attack. So they have something they refer to as the Blood Falls. There's a place where it literally looks like it's gushing out blood. It's like when the elevator doors open in The Shining and then like all that blood just gushed out. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So this was discovered back in 1911 by an Australian geologist. But don't worry, it's not actually blood. At first, it was thought that it was a result of microscopic red algae. But in 2003, it was actually discovered that the color was a result of oxidized iron. Nonetheless, it looks very creepy. In fact, I've seen this image circling around the web before and people are using it as a PSA of like, all the animals that have died in the Arctic and that's their blood. Clearly, it's false, but again, a very creepy image. Moving on to number seven, we have the creatures. Antarctica is home to a number of very creepy looking creatures. It was previously thought that because of its harsh conditions, nothing could survive there. But scientists have discovered a number of weird species that have adapted to survive in the environment. First off, let's talk about the sea spider. Now, Antarctica isn't the only place that has these creatures. But actually, the sea spiders in Antarctica are massive. In Europe, these spiders are about the size of your fingernail. In Antarctica, they're the size of a large dinner plate. Now, technically, they aren't actually spiders, even though they have eight legs. They belong to a class of species called pycnogonids instead of arachnids. Seriously, these creatures are terrifying looking. It's like a mixture of a crab and a spider. And those legs are super long. What's super weird about them is that they pump blood with their guts. This is the first time that this kind of circulatory system has been seen in nature. And they breathe through their skin, which actually allows more oxygen to be absorbed into their bodies, which allows them in turn to grow bigger over time. How great. Coming in at number six, we have the plane crash. In the 1970s, Antarctica, for some reason, was the place to travel to. Tons of tourists from New Zealand were booking day trips to Antarctica. However, one of these trips ended very badly. Due to low visibility, the plane crashed at the side of Mount Erubus. To this day, remnants of the crash are still there on the mountain. As for the passengers on board, well, their bodies were removed and stored at an American base on Ross Island. Many visitors to this day believe that this site is haunted by the ghosts of the passengers who died in the crash. People have heard eerie voices, felt ghostly presences, and have discovered unexplained footprints. 
One of the workers at the station experienced this all himself and is convinced it's haunted. So yeah, there's ghosts in Antarctica. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the ghost towns. Believe it or not, but Antarctica is filled with ghost towns. This is from humans trying to live there, but ultimately finding the weather conditions to be way too harsh, and then they end up just leaving. And they leave everything behind. As a result, there are tons of abandoned buildings and structures all over Antarctica, from military bases to research stations to huts. You get the picture. Back in the early 2000s, however, a team of scientists went to Antarctica and found something very disturbing. While exploring some of the abandoned buildings, they found several frozen bodies. Most likely, these people weren't properly equipped for the cold. But still, that must have been a horrifying find. In our fourth spot, we have the bristle worm. Okay, if you thought the sea spiders were bad, wait until you hear about this bad boy. This is something straight out of your nightmares. Basically, it's a worm-type creature with bristles, hence the name bristle worm. Its nasty looking bristles help it crawl along the ocean floor and swim and also to protect itself. This creature also has pretty sharp teeth and it's a carnivore. So, you know, there's that. Oh, and it extends its jaws to catch its prey. It gets worse. This thing, is huge. It can grow to more than 20 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. No, thank you. No, that's just no. And the part of the creature that looks like it would be its head? No, that's its throat. I know, I'm grossed out too. And at number three, we have the penguin mummies. I mean like ancient Egypt mummies, not like the penguin's mom. So in 2016, a group of scientists discovered hundreds of mummified penguins in Antarctica. Since Antarctica has little precipitation and is dry and cold, it can mummify animals much like a desert would. In fact, it's still considered a desert even though it's cold. Well, anyway, scientists found a large amount of mummified penguins, many of which were just chicks. Some of the birds were from 200 years ago, others were from 750 years ago. All still perfectly preserved. It's thought that these birds died because of global warming. The weather drastically changed on these animals and it caused them to slowly die. Nonetheless, it must have been pretty creepy to arrive there only to find a graveyard of mummies. In our second spot, we have the monument. In 2009, a bunch of scientists in Antarctica discovered something rather strange. It was a monument with a bust of Vladimir Lenin on top, the former premier of the Soviet Union. After digging around the half-buried monument, they discovered an old Soviet Union military base, which by then was covered completely in snow. Had it not been for the monument sticking out, they probably would have never found it. Here's where it gets strange. After they unearthed this monument, the men began to become haunted by Lenin's ghost. And other explorers have claimed to have seen a ghostly apparition in that area, and they claim it looks exactly like him. Freaky, I know. Sometimes what's buried is sometimes better left buried. And in our number one spot, we have the ghost ship. Back in 1823, a boat named the Jenny left port on an exploration. However, along the way, something went wrong and it seems like the men aboard starved and then froze to death. The boat then got trapped in the ice in Antarctica. Several years later, a crew passing by noticed the ship and decided to climb aboard to see what's up. There they found the entire crew frozen to death, perfectly preserved. One of the last journal entries from the captain read, May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. That is so creepy. Number 10, dinosaur. When it comes to big things, dinosaurs were pretty damn big. Scientists were able to uncover the fossilized remains of a new and unknown species of dinosaur underneath the ice sheets in Greenland. When the dinosaurs were alive, the earth was a lot warmer and more tropical, these fossils becoming trapped under the ice when the climate changed into the ice age. The skull they found is thought to be a two-legged plant-eating dinosaur of medium size, and they dubbed the new species Issy Sinique. The dinosaur is believed to have grown to the size of 10 to 30 feet, and the skull they found is thought to be that of a younger dinosaur that had not fully grown yet. They used computer technology to create 
create 3D scans of the head before sending the specimens to the Natural History Museum in Denmark as they have sovereignty over the country of Greenland. It is the first known dinosaur to have been native to Greenland and is thought to come from the late Triassic period around 200 million years ago. Number 9. Bison The massive carcass of a bison known as a steppe bison was found by a gold mining family in Alaska way back in 1979. They were using a mining hose and were melting a frozen block of ice, effectively thawing out the creature that had become trapped inside. The bison species is from the ice age and the body that they found is thought to be tens of thousands of years old. Once they were finally able to fully excavate the body, they found other things alongside it, including hair, insects, wood, and different plants. When the pelt of the animal reacted to the soil around it, it turned the body blue, and so the bison ended up being dubbed Blue Babe. Analysis of the body showed it had died 36,000 years ago, a result of being attacked by an Ice Age lion. The ice allowed the creature to be incredibly well preserved, scientists even being able to find pockets of blood in the body. Number 8. Cave Bear This specimen found on an island in the Arctic was a very unique discovery, said to be one of the first of its kind. Researchers found a well-preserved body of a cave bear that was around 40,000 years old. Cave bears would grow to be around 7 feet long and typically weighed over 1,000 pounds in their adulthood. Before this discovery was made, they only knew about the animal from skulls and bones and had never found a specimen that was this fully preserved. The body that they found had all of its organs still and even still had its nose on its face, paired with its terrifyingly massive sharp teeth. According to one of Russia's leading Ice Age experts, the discovery of the body was of world importance and is the first and only find of its kind. The body was found by a group of reindeer herders on the island and was then sent around to various scientists to study the life of the animal. Number 7. Horned Lark Alright, some of these creatures aren't that big, but they're still pretty interesting, and size doesn't matter anyways. In 2018, fossil hunters were in the northeastern part of Siberia, known as the Pole of Cold, and they were tunneling into the permafrost. Deep underground, they discovered the body of a bird thought to be around 46,000 years old, but it was incredibly well preserved and scientists say that it looks like it could have only died a few days ago. Researchers believe that it is the ancestor of the horned lark bird and is the first of its kind to have ever been discovered. It is also said to be one of the best preserved specimens ever discovered as it was almost completely intact and still had all of its parts. The ice age that took place is thought to have generated many new species who adapted and this is one of them. Siberia is home to a lot of frozen discoveries due to its freezing cold temperatures and who knows what else is sitting in the ice just waiting to be found. Number 6. Wolf the Pleistocene era, or Ice Age, lasted from about 2 million to 11,000 years ago, and many great extinct creatures we've discovered come from this era. One of these discoveries was the head of a massive Ice Age era wolf that was still snarling 40,000 years after it had died. It was found in a cold region of Russia and is one of the first full-sized frozen wolves ever to be discovered. They found it in the summer of 2018 and it was described as having mammoth-like fur, sharp fangs, and was between the ages of 2 and 4 when it passed away. Because only the head was discovered, it only gave small clues towards the evolution of wolves and how they have changed and adapted over the years, but researchers were still able to reconstruct the head using 3D models and get a solid understanding of what these Ice Age wolves looked like. In fact, the specimen was so well preserved that it even still had parts of its brain. Number 5. Lion Cubs as I've mentioned before, Siberia is a place that is fairly popular for finding frozen specimens, and this time they didn't just find one animal, but instead two matching ones. They found two mummified cave lions that lived during the Ice Age around 30,000 years ago, giving them the names Sparta and Boris. They were found in 2017 and 2018 by mammoth tusk collectors, and one of the cubs was believed at the time to be the best preserved Ice Age animal ever found. 
It was originally thought that the two cubs they discovered were siblings, being only a few months old at the time of their death, but research showed that Boris had actually died about 15,000 years before Sparta. Sparta still had her fur, teeth, skin, organs, and even her whiskers, looking like she may have only recently died despite being a part of a species that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. If given the chance to grow up, the cubs would have managed to grow to 5 feet long and weigh almost 1,000 pounds. Number 4. Sharks Creatures that are found frozen in ice don't always actually come from the Ice Age. There are plenty of cold places right now where animals can unfortunately become trapped, or pass away and then freeze. In Cape Cod, Massachusetts, it has become startlingly common for giant sharks to become frozen in the ice off the coast. A few years ago, they found a total of four different sharks that had all become frozen in the ice and passed away. The sharks were apparently becoming trapped in shallow waters during changing weather conditions, and sudden cold snaps would cause them to freeze and die. The thresher sharks that were commonly becoming trapped were apparently not a very well studied species, so the bodies that were found were taken and thawed in order to be dissected and researched. The Atlantic White Shark Conservancy even went so far to refer to the specimens as sharksicles, but probably not something you'd want to eat on a hot day in the summer. Number 3. Mummies Human remains are usually found when archaeologists dig up large graves and find skeletons, but in a rare case they manage to find the well-preserved and mummified body of a woman. A group of hikers exploring an Argentinian volcano found the body of a woman who appeared to have died around 500 years ago. The body was well preserved due to the incredibly high and cold elevation at which it was found. It's believed that the body was there as part of an ancient sacrificial ritual, and the woman, named the Inca Ice Maiden, was sacrificed. She was given lots of food and drink before being led up the volcano where she was left to die of exposure. The discovery of her body was also incredibly important because from samples they took, they were able to discover that she was fighting tuberculosis, and these sorts of samples can help us work towards fighting these diseases in the modern day. Number 2. Full in the summer of 2018, they found what they called the best preserved ice age animal ever found. Feels like they say that a lot. Anyways, mammoth tusk hunters in Siberia found the body of an around 42,000 year old horse foal, incredibly well preserved thanks to the cold temperatures. They say that it was only about two weeks old at the time of its death and they were able to extract both blood and urine samples from it. The discovery apparently pushed scientists closer to the hope that they could bring these extinct creatures like mammoths back to life. I think we should listen to Jurassic Park's warnings and just deal with the animals we actually have right now. I know you might be thinking that a baby horse isn't some terrifying giant ice age creature, but full grown horses are pretty big, okay, and they're actually kind of terrifying. I mean they basically walk on one giant finger. It's creepy and I don't like it. Number 1. Baby Mammoth During the Ice Age, mammoths were one of the biggest creatures around, basically being massive furry elephants. This young woolly mammoth specimen was found in, you guessed it, Siberia. This incredibly well preserved body of a young female woolly mammoth named Yuka is said to have lived around 28,000 years ago and they were discovered around a decade ago. Due to her good condition, scientists were eager to conduct experiments and one of those was taking cells from her body. When they put the cells together, they found that they were still active, even almost 30,000 years later, so they managed to technically revive Yuka in a way. At full size, woolly mammoths were usually around 13 feet tall and would weigh around 13,000 pounds, or the same as around 26,000 large oranges if that helps you picture it. Number 10. Hidden Lakes so it took working at a champagne restaurant to find out that salt water doesn't freeze. We Well, it does, but at very, very low temperatures. We used to use it to hyper chill wine that was in storage because salty water can get colder than 0 degrees Celsius without freezing. The saltier the water, the colder it gets because salt lowers the freezing point because it interferes with the water molecules ability to form crystals, which is at least one reason why Deep Lake in Antarctica has stayed liquid for millions of years. It sits 55 meters below the sea level and the 
salinity of the water increases as it gets deeper. Despite temperatures reaching minus 20 degrees Celsius, the lake remains in a liquid state, though entirely uninhabitable, or so they thought. Scientists have covered at least four microbe species living in the water, but that's about the only thing that can. Because the water can reach much colder temperatures than the sea, even penguins wouldn't survive for long. They have been caught swimming in it, but it would feel to them what it feels like for us jumping into an icy lake for a polar dip. You know, if they stay too long, it would probably kill them. How the lake formed exactly still has scientists baffled, but they're probably, but, but let's be honest, they'll, they'll probably figure it out. <laughs> Number nine. Rainforests? Press rewind on the world for long enough and you would arrive in a world of opposites, which includes Antarctica being closer to a rainforest than an icy tundra. Scientists gathered that before Antarctica was an expanse of ice, the region may have been host to lush forests, diverse wildlife, and even early human civilizations. But why do they think that? Scientists began discovering fossilized wood, leaf impressions, and signs of tropical trees. On top of that, they have found tons of fossils of marine animals, dinosaurs, and birds from the Cretaceous period, so you can see how they deduced the existence of some kind of forest-like area. Scientists are now looking to Antarctica for clues about evolution that we may have missed. So far, they have discovered a 50 million year old sperm cell on the egg case of a long extinct worm species, which is extraordinary if you think about it. Man. Like, talk about resilience, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Number eight, mountains. Imagine the ice melts away, and beneath those massive, vast sheets of ice is an entire mountain range. Well, guess what? You don't have to imagine it, it's real. Hiding out beneath a two to four kilometer thick sheet of ice are what's called the Gamberts of Mountains. They stretch across 1,200 kilometers and rise about a third of the height of Mount Everest. But how did an entire mountain range that high get covered in a sheet of ice? When Soviet geophysicist Grigory A. Gambert made the discovery in 1958, he had the same question. Though he hasn't actually seen the mountains, covered by ice, remember? But was able to figure out that they were there by measuring the abnormal gravity fluctuations in the area. They have since used radars to interpret the physical attributes of the mountains, but how did they end up that far beneath the ice? The mountains are around a billion years old, and scientists figure they should have eroded away by now. But the most popular theory as to why they are still there is that the erosion process just paused as soon as the ice sheet got large enough. To picture how immense this is, just imagine that the Rocky Mountains are covered by a sheet of ice. Astounding. Number seven, dangerous bacteria. Have you ever heard of Pandora's box? Well, it may surprise you to learn that Antarctica might very well just be that. Scientists have discovered microbes beneath Antarctic ice that could threaten life on planet Earth. Maybe. Ice is an excellent preservation method, and the 420,000 year old microbes may only need to melt in order to come back to life. Now, it is equally likely that these microbes could be entirely harmless, but there is a chance that they won't be. But the fact that it could be so dangerous has scientists keeping tabs on them as closely as possible. Still, it sounds like a Stephen King apocalyptic horror film waiting to happen, so who the heck knows? <laughs> we didn't see the past two years happening, did we? Number six, Blood Falls. Blood falls. Get your mind out of the gutter. Sounds pretty terrifying, as it would have been for the person who first discovered it. In the McMurdo Dry Valley, there's a bright crimson river that cuts between Taylor Glacier and Lake Bonnie. It looks like someone went to town on their dinner and just let the bodies drain into the water. But thank goodness there is a scientific explanation. Beneath the glacier, there is a very briny lake that was cut off from the atmosphere and is three times as salty as seawater, meaning, as we know now, that it can't really freeze, but it can, I guess, at a very low level. At first, it was suspected that a kind of red algae had infiltrated the glacier, causing the vibrant red hue, but in actuality, the briny lake is incredibly high in iron, and since it was cut off from oxygen for millions of years, the red color is a product of the reaction the water has to the oxygen and the sunlight from the atmosphere. The iron in the water oxidizes and rusts, like your car, which brings out the vibrant red illusion that is blood falls. Number five, ancient meteorites. 
You may think meteorites and asteroids are dangerous, but something far less obvious may cause more damage than a doom rock. 430,000 years ago, smack dab in the middle of the Pleistocene epoch, a massive space rock the size of a soccer field crashed through Earth's atmosphere, but instead of smashing into the Earth, an air burst happened. Just before it slammed into the ice, it burst into pieces exploding in the sky and launched a superheated jet of gas. The explosion caused massive amounts of damage, scattering pieces of itself everywhere, which is how scientists were able to deduce that this happened. They found pieces of the asteroid across the ice and used chemical clues to link the particles together. They were also able to determine that the force of the blast was about, get ready, a thousand times stronger than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima, and that destroyed an entire city. So. And, and some, so imagine what would have happened if that happened today. Number four, oil guzzling fungi. So we mentioned that there might be a world ending microbes beneath the ice, but there also could be something that saves it. A unique kind of fungi has been found beneath the ice gorging on petroleum. What on earth could that possibly be used for, you ask? Well, if these fun little guys. These fun little guys love eating oil so much, then imagine how happy they'd be to dive into, let's say, an oil spill. They were first encountered when scientists came upon fuel containers left by explorers and immediately began studying them. Fungi don't usually just flourish at parties, they flourish in warm wooded regions, but perhaps the fungus that used to thrive in the rainforest we mentioned, they evolved to thrive in the icy bearing conditions as well. So cool. We could learn so much about evolution that way. Number three, top three. Singing ice. Yup, the ice is singing. After scientists installed seismic sensors in the ice to measure its behavior, they discovered a mysterious song. Well, more like a massive ice drum. And it sounds like this. The pitch changes based on the weather, though you wouldn't be able to hear it should you just stand on it. It's not audible to the human ear. But the humming occurs on the 500,000 square kilometer on the Ross Ice Shelf, about the size of France. The winds blowing across the snow dunes is what causes the humming, and scientists figure that this could be an even better way to keep tabs on how the ice is doing in relation to global warming. The ice is thinning due to global warming, and the song is almost a gift, an easier way to track the stability and vulnerability of the ice shelf. Sounds like nature is working with us to save itself. Number two, cosmic particles. A mystery capable of breaking physics. If that were possible, it would be found in Antarctica. Since March 2016, researchers have been furrowing their brows over two distinct events that shouldn't have happened. Physicists caught cosmic rays that burst out from the Earth, not from space. The rays were detected by ANITA, NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, a balloon borne antenna. The balloon is designed to find cosmic rays from outer space and caused a lot of excitement when it caught them coming up from the Earth instead. The discovery even implied theories that could support parallel universes. What boggles scientists about this discovery is that two particles seem to be cosmic rays that blasted through the planet and back out the other side. They shouldn't be able to do that. They now suspect that they may be particles that defy the standard model of how particles are supposed to behave and maybe they're a new type of particle altogether. This is obviously a very simplistic explanation. It gets a lot more complicated and there's still more information out there, but still, really, really cool. And last but not least, a hidden German base. There are several versions of this story, some even going so far as theorizing that World War II mustache man escaped there and didn't die in his bunker. Some theories even say that German intelligence encountered aliens and developed new weapons with their tech. But the one truth is that there was indeed a secret World War II German base in Antarctica. Apparently there was an expedition to establish a base as a whaling station in order to increase Germany's production of fat, which could be used for soap and mayonnaise and butter. The expedition was led by Alfred Richter and other theories suggest Adolf himself sent the expeditions to research ways Germany could become a self-supporting country. Perhaps the reason was that innocent, but with the base having been abandoned 70 years ago, we will never know. Starting off number 10 now, we have Blood Falls. In 1911, scientists noticed something pretty horrifying around cliffs in Antarctica. It looked like some of them were oozing blood. It shocked the world. What could possibly be producing these rivers of blood? Was 
there's something hidden within the ice that we didn't know about, something that could only exist in these hostile alien conditions of Antarctica. At the time, scientists believed it was being caused by algae discoloring the water. The hypothesis was never verified though. In 2017, the mystery was finally solved thanks to research by the University of Alaska Fairbanks. The deep red colouring is due to oxidised iron in brine salt water. It's essentially the same process that makes iron go dark red when it rusts. When the iron rich salt water comes into contact with the oxygen on the surface, the iron oxidises and this colours the water and ice red. I think we can all breathe a sigh of relief now that there isn't some hellish blood monster living under the Antarctic ice. Next up at number 9 now we have the abandoned huts. On November 1st 1911, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott departed from Cape Evans on his Terra Nova expedition, trying to become the first human to reach the South Pole. They made it to the South Pole, but sadly they found they had been beaten to it by a group of Norwegians led by Amundsen. The team faced unusually bad weather on their return journey and tragically died before they could even reach their hut with all of their supplies. The hut was used by another team in 1917, but after that it was abandoned. For years it was slowly covered in ice and snow until 1956 when a US expeditionary party dug it out. It was found to be in a remarkably well preserved state. The beds were as they left them, so too were their scientific instruments. Canned food still sits on the shelves. A London newspaper from that time is on one of the desks. The frozen and dry environment of Antarctica have preserved a lot of things, but decay does still occur there. Visitors to the Discovery Hut discovered the now century old seal meat as smelling quite rancid, and some people thought that the huts themselves are now affected by fungal decay. Moving on to number 8 now, we have bacteria. In 2008, scientists managed to revive bacterium extracted from Antarctic ice that was 8 million years old. You heard me right, 8 million years. Right away, many people became concerned. Was this a danger? It sounded a bit like the start of a Hollywood movie where the bacteria goes on to wipe out the whole of humanity. The scientists assured the public though that there was nothing to worry about and that the bacteria was unlikely to cause human diseases. You'll note that they said unlikely though. It's not definitely impossible. This bacteria is so old that when it came into existence 8 million years ago, the common ancestor of humans and chimpanzees was alive on the planet. So, how are these things still alive? Well, Paul Falowski of Rutgers University described the bacteria as having been in a suspended state of animation for 8 million years, and that global warming melting glaciers could result in the release of more ancient organisms into the sea. Next up at number 7 now, we have the pyramid. In November 2016, the internet was abuzz with talk of a pyramid that had been found buried in the Antarctic ice. Now, before you dismiss this as nonsense, take a look at this picture. Yeah. That does look a lot like a pyramid. It was first discovered by the British Antarctic Expedition of 1910 to 1913. They were stunned by its appearance and decided to name it the Pyramid, a name still used on geological surveys of the area. It's located in the Ellsworth Mountains, which is a range more than 400 kilometers long. The pyramid is one of the peaks of this mountain range. Naturally, you know what I'm going to say next. Many conspiracy theorists stated that this is proof of an ancient civilization that lived on Antarctica before being consumed by the ice and their existence covered up by today's governments. Of course, experts have dismissed all of this, saying that pyramids are not a complicated shape and are not an uncommon appearance in nature. What do you guys think? Next up at number 6 now we have the lake. Lake Vostok is one of the biggest lakes on the planet. If you've never heard of it, don't worry, that's probably because Lake Rostock is buried underneath more than 2 miles of ice in Antarctica. It's been covered in ice for at least 15 million years, but it's still liquid down there. The crushing layer of ice from above and geothermal activity below have ensured that. Its presence was first suggested in the 1960s by a Russian pilot who noticed a large smooth patch of ice above the lake from the air. Radar experiments by British and Russian researchers in 1996 confirmed the lake's existence. The lake is massive. 140 43 miles long, 31 miles wide, and up to 2,625 feet deep. In 2012, Russian scientists managed to successfully drill a hole down to the lake's water. They believe that down there is microbial life that is unique from everything else here on Earth, having been isolated for 15 million years. Now the search begins. Next up at number 5 now we have Allen Hills 84001. In 1984, a team of US meteorite hunters discovered a Martian meteorite in Antarctica's ice. It was only about 4 3 pounds, but by 1996 it was causing quite a stir when a group of scientists claimed they had found evidence of microscopic life in the actual meteorite. 
Was this proof of life on Mars or at least that life used to be on Mars because they thought it was fossilized? The media went into a frenzy either way. Even US President Bill Clinton gave a speech about it. The hysteria was because the strange chain structures on that meteorite looked like they could have been fossilized bacteria. There was also the fact that the meteorite broke off from Mars about 17 million years ago during a time when Mars had liquid water on its surface and carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. It seemed like life could have been around there. Then. Eventually these claims were rejected though and the features of the meteorite were explained without requiring life to be present. The meteorite now remains on display in the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. Moving on to number 4 now we have the dinosaur. In February 2019 the fossil of a new species of reptile was announced. It had been found by researchers in the Antarctic ice during a 2010-2011 expedition. It's believed to be an early relative of dinosaurs who lived in Antarctica millions of years before the continent drifted to its position over the South Pole and became uninhabitable for most complex life forms. Around 250 million years ago, Antarctica was covered in lush forests and rivers with many species of wildlife living there, including reptiles. The temperature is thought to have almost never dropped below freezing point. The scientists named the iguana sized reptile Antarctanax shackletoni. Antarctanax translates to Antarctic King, and shackletoni is in honor of the Antarctic explorer Ernest Shackleton. Moving on to number 3 now, we have Patchy Mass. In June 2018, YouTube user Wow For Real made a video showing his discovery of a 14 mile structure buried in Antarctica. He made the discovery using Google Maps and described it as a patchy mass that you could easily see from outer space. He said he'd used Google Maps to search the entire continent before and had never found anything like this. He even pointed out that there were strange brush strokes over the mass which made him think someone was trying to cover this up. It didn't take long before people started speculating about what was going on here. The YouTuber himself put forward the idea that if the brush effect was removed, perhaps we see some sort of giant UFO mothership buried in ice. In all probability, it's probably just a research facility, but we still don't know for sure yet as this strange block still remains on Google Maps to this day. You can even go and see it for yourself. Coming in at number 2 now, we have the wreckage. In January 2013, three Canadian men took off on a plane from the Amundsen Scott South Pole Research Station en route to an Italian research base in Terra Nova Bay. At some point during the journey, the emergency transmitter went off and a search party was sent sent out to find them. Bad weather hampered rescue efforts and after 6 days they finally found the plane but it was too late to save them. It had crashed into one of Antarctica's highest mountains. The rescue team were unable to get into the cockpit and were only able to retrieve some luggage. After 4 hours there they determined it was too risky to stay any longer as the weather was taking a serious turn for the worse and they were afraid of an avalanche occurring. It took 9 months before another team set out during Antarctica's summer period to retrieve the frozen remains of the 3 Canadian. Canadian men. And finally number 1 now we have Endurance. We talked about the explorer Shackleton earlier. Well Endurance was the name of the ship that he used to go to Antarctica in the first place. The ship was abandoned by Shackleton and his team when she was crushed by ice in the Weddell Sea off Antarctica causing her to sink. In the years since then there have been 3 expeditions that have tried and failed to locate Endurance. In 2018 that changed though. A team at the Scott Polar Research Institute launched a new search using more sophisticated technology. Such such as GPS and drones to help them see possible routes in the ice. They also used an autonomous underwater vehicle. The video you're watching right now was released in February 2019 and according to what I've read, the search for endurance is happening at this moment looking for a ship thousands of feet beneath the frigid waves. I thought I'd end on this one because it's not been discovered quite yet and that's kind of exciting. There's a lot more to uncover in the incredible world of Antarctica. Number 10, sand hoppers. Sand, hopping, and Antarctica? Get out of town. A sand hopper sounds like something from the movie Dune. These amphipod crustaceans can be found more often than not near shores, but also in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean. They eat decaying or dead material. I mean, just, just by looking at them, you can tell that they eat leftovers. They're around 1 meter long to a few inches long. They're tiny little buggy dudes. They're pretty unique as well. When we think of the bottom of the food chain, we don't connect beauty with them a lot, right? These sand hoppers can come in many different shapes, sizes, and even colors. Some are pale, some are camouflage, some are bright red. They're all unique New Yorks. Look at them go. Number 9, ice fish. Fish that are icy. Yes, here we go. Now we're back on track. This makes much more sense for Antarctica. Ice fish didn't get their name because they live in a place full of ice. They literally are the most cold-blooded creature on the planet. 
aside from your ex, of course. They can adapt their body temperature to the water and stay cold. They stay frosty, my friends. If they encounter warm water, God forbid, well, they simply won't survive. It's chilly waters or bust for ice fish. If you're wondering how they swim around without literally freezing solid, it's because, well, similarly to the fish that we had on part one, these two create glycoproteins, which is a natural antifreeze, if you will. That's why they don't have chunks of ice hanging off of them, just weighing them down all day. They have a natural antifreeze, but no hemoglobin, so their blood is white. So underwater, they just look like nothing, really. Invisible ice fish. Yeah, this place is wild. Number eight, narwhals. The unicorn of the sea. Are these things real? I have never seen one before. But to be fair, I don't spend a lot of time in Arctic waters, so. That makes sense. My last name has waters in it, but I don't really like the water, you know? Nor do I have a horn growing out of my head, so I don't belong anywhere near these guys. Narwhals can grow up to 17 feet in length. Their horn is mighty. Tusk, rather, they're one single head tusk. I like saying horn because it's majestic. It reminds you of unicorns, right? And narwhals are majestic. More often than not, males will grow the tusk, and female narwhals have these tiny little tusks. Scientists still can't explain the reason behind a narwhal's tusk in the first place. Why is it used? I mean, so far, we believe it's to impress females. Females. That's our main guess. Or hunt other males. Yeah, we got narwhals jesting in the ocean for love. A lot happening over in the uh, Arctic. Number seven, walrus. Yeah, since we're on the topic of tusks, why not? These guys are also pretty bizarre when you really think about it. They have massive tusks coming out of their face. And I recently watched that horror movie with Justin Long called Tusk, and now I can't look at a walrus ever again the same. Duh. These arctic creatures have some odd patterns. Their abilities are also extremely underrated. Their tusks can reach three feet and they use them to hoist themselves out of the water. Yeah, they bite into the ice and then pull their fat bodies out. I can't even bite ice cream. Imagine using your teeth to get out of the ocean. Ugh, that's athletic, man. Walrus can also slow their heart rate down in order to save energy. That's also pretty neat. They have fantastic abilities to adapt, but humans, we almost sent these beautiful creatures into extinction. Classic. Classic humans just getting involved, wanting to take a look. Walrus hunting is now illegal for the most part, aside from a few areas. So these blubbery boys still have a fighting chance. But historically, a walrus have never attacked a human ever. So don't be afraid of them. They don't want any beef, just fish. Number six, snailfish. Another fish, another fun fact. There's around 400 types of snailfish in the frigid depths of the Arctic. The frigid depths of the Arctic. Why did I write, I write myself tongue twisters. Now, of course, there are many that haven't even been discovered yet, which is always fun. Thankfully, we have researchers take on these daring expeditions, like the secrets of Antarctica, for example. This documentary is breathtaking, and it's on YouTube for free. It was released back in 2019 on Track's official page. In this documentary, scientist Andrew Stewart finds a new species of snailfish. Yeah, spoiler alert, but had to include it. Now you want to take a look. He said the discovery is beyond words. Yeah, more than fair. Look at this thing. I wouldn't know what to say. He's a squishy tadpole looking rubbery fish. He looks quite sad. And to be fair, when you live 700 meters below in freezing cold water and you don't have much company, yeah, that's... I'd be sad too. That is until Andrew Stewart came along and introduced you to the rest of the world. Now we know what this thing is. Massive eyes, unique color patterns. Not everything down there is terrifying. Just most things, I guess. Number five, Feather Star. Scientific name is Promacochnerus gurgulenus. That's, uh, I tried 17 other times, but we had to cut it out, so that's the best I could do. We'll call it Feather Star. Feather Star is a little bit easier today. And dare I say, that name is quite fitting. Look at him go! He's like a mop head with feelings. He is on a mission. The Feather Star was discovered during the Challenger expedition way back in the early 70s. They're too fast. I mean, like, they're not fast, but they can really move around for what they are. Five centimeters per second. That's, that's pretty fast for an ice-cold crinoid. There's three main parts to this fantastic brain. Brush. There's the stem, the calyx, and the arms. Now these guys, they self-repair their body parts, which is just insane to me. They'll just yank off one of their arms and just grow a whole new one, like it's no problem. They trap prey. Well, rather, they trap any food particles that float on by. They use their long feathery arms and their natural sticky mucus to catch food and then cycle it through their body. Feather stars reproduce every 10 to 16 months. I have my hands up, like I want to be a feather star. I don't know why I'm doing this. Hi, like RuPaul. Feather stars reproduce every 10 to 16 months, but it's tricky. Male and female sea stars live in different habitats, right? Different sides of the gymnasium during that first dance, right? They have to kind of get close. They're on opposite ends here. So mating season really has to go swimmingly or else their population is literally at stake. Hope they get along. Number four, growler bear. Yeah, I said growler bear instead of polar bear. What about it? Let's talk. 
Does this bear do roller derby? Is that where it gets its name from? What's going on? Back in 2006, a Canadian hunter found a hybrid bear. They called it a pizzly bear or a growler bear. You get what I'm doing here? Because it looks like a mix of the two, but it actually was a hybrid. Yeah, tests were later conducted in 2010 after more appeared in Alaska and Northern Canada. Historically, polar bears branched off of grizzlies, you know, like DNA wise way back. Now we're at a point where Arctic areas are warming up and these two species are both traveling further away to find food. So now these two branches are starting to merge back together and in turn we get a growler bear. Which is just fun to say, a growler bear. Number three, Arctic octopus. I watched my octopus teacher last week with Olivia and uh, we both bawled our eyes out. That was a great fun time, that was good, that was a nice date. I didn't know I could get so attached to an octopus. These little guys are fascinating, they dream, they use shells, as tools and like shields. They can camouflage, they have nine brains, eight arms, three hearts, and hundreds of suckers, and one life. I don't know why I added that at the end. I didn't even add that, I was like, oh, we need a one here for this list. Antarctic octopus survive in sub-zero temperatures by using a blue pigment in their blood. They use a natural protein called hemokyanin. They oxygenate their bodies and they adapt to harsh environments, and most importantly, they're really cute. Yeah, look at this little guy. Their appendages are all tight. It keeps it warm and keeps it cozy. That's great. Little arms, oh, I can't even look at him. He's so cute. Get him out of here. Get that guy out of here. I wanna poke him. Number two, basket stars. This next one here is truly a basket case. The basket star, scientific name Gorganocephalus, sounds like a Harry Potter villain, does not look like any type of sea star that we've seen before. Basket stars are brittle stars. They can crawl with these lanky, long appendages. I mean, I would definitely know. This one here was found at 500 meters below sea level. Just walk walking around like haunted hay, just taking its time, just drifting along. It could also feed by floating along the surface of the water, so next time you take an ice cold dip, watch out you don't run into one of these. Keep your mouth shut when you're swimming. I wish you got one of these brittle, fuzzy things in your mouth, gross. And coming in at number one, pile of bones. Look, I know this isn't a creature per se, but it's too interesting to leave out. Antarctica is another planet. That place looks like Hoth sometimes, especially in 2016. A team of researchers were working on James Ross Island and they stumbled across 70 million year old fossils. Yeah, what a find. Ancient sea creatures, ancestors of ducks, this thing was a loaded pierogi of history. Researchers have also recently found that 75 million years ago, wildfires were once ripping through Antarctica. How wild is that? Dinosaurs and wildfires. Yeah, a little different than today's Antarctica, just a, just a tad. Most ancient wildfire evidence has been found in the Northern Hemisphere. So to find the burnt remains of coniferous trees, like charcoal fragments in Antarctica, it reminds us that once upon a time, Antarctica was once fresh, but it separated from God Gondwana. It was isolated, it was ice free, most importantly, and it was full of volcanic activity and high oxygen. Tectonic plates were running wild during the Cretaceous period. This was a wild, wild time. Antarctica sure is barren now, but oh boy. Are we lucky that's the case? Scary dinosaurs and fires, no, no thank you. Kicking off the list at number 10, sea pigs. This list gets creepy and or crawly, but first we gotta ease into the Arctic Ocean. We gotta start off this haunting list with the sea pig. Look at this little guy, okay, the pug of the ocean. He looks like a stress ball with feelings. What's going on with him? They look like something that would be microscopic, but really they're six inches long wide, around, big, I don't know, they're pretty large. They stick together, and I mean that in a literal sense. Sea pigs will travel in large gatherings. They live in the deepest, darkest depths of the ocean, so they're hard to find, really. Their mating routine is also still a mystery. We have no idea how they do it. And just by looking at them, we're like, no guesses, certainly no guesses from me. All we know is that they travel in groups, so. I don't know. Sounds like it's a good time, at least. Lifespan and mating life, total mystery. All we know is that they eat decaying matter on the ocean floor. Kudos to the crew over at Ambari. The footage they find of these deep sea creatures is always fascinating. It's always so otherworldly over at Ambari. Are you guys hiring? I'm afraid of the ocean, but you know, I'll do some behind the scenes stuff, who knows. I'll just edit the weird fish. I'll put the text in. Like, what the f is this? Ooh. Number nine, rock bottom. A little over a year ago, scientists camped out in the middle of the Filchner Ron ice shelf for nearly three months. Why? All in the name of science. Yeah, we're getting cold. Geologist James Smith from the British Antarctic Survey slept in a tent. Who does this? Why do you choose to do this? James Smith, apparently. Here we go. He flew five hours out to this ice shelf. Him and his team had to melt 20 tons of snow in order to pour hot water through this ice shelf for 30 hours straight. When the team lowered their gear down through this 3,000 feet of 
ice, they couldn't get a sample of sediment from the ocean floor because they hit a boulder. I mean, the odds here alone, I mean, the entire seafloor is basically flat and they end up hitting this thing. At first they were frustrated, but this boulder that is 160 miles away from daylight is home to microbial malt, these alien-like sponges. These cylindrical sponges, possibly hydroids. I love seeing scientists get jazzed about stuff. They're like, oh, this rock had absolutely no business being here. Like, guy, you just melted through ice for 20 hours in the middle of Antarctica. I, I feel like it's the other way around. Imagine if those sea sponges could talk. They're like, oh, of all the spots, really? Please close that. The first shred of light, and it's just a big GoPro coming at them. They're like, what is that? Number eight, emperor penguins. They're as glorious as their name hints towards. I remember watching Happy Feet a lot growing up. I was really into penguins and tap dancing for a hot minute there. That movie changed the game. The main penguins here, they're all emperor penguins. Robin Williams' character, Lovelace, he's a rock hopper penguin with the cool, you know, the fluffy eyebrows. The other guys are all emperor penguins. The colorful orange necks, the OG characters, they're all beautiful. They're the largest penguins on the planet and their breeding habits set them aside from the rest. Once the female lays an egg, I'm not gonna do sound effects for this whole process. I don't know why I did that. That's <laughs> so stupid. Once the female lays an egg, she'll leave it with her mate for an incubation period, but she'll walk over 50 miles to the ocean just to get food. The mate has to fast for around 100 days just waiting for his next meal. Once in the water, these emperor penguins really go for it. They soar. They can dive up to 2,000 feet, which is far deeper than any bird in the animal kingdom. And they can hold their breath for around 20 minutes, which is incredible. The longest I've gotten is three minutes, but I'm coming for you, Mumbles. Number seven, chin strap penguins. Okay, from happy feet to slappy feet. Chinstrap penguins are the most aggressive of the penguin family. They're crazy. These guys are nuts. They're tiny. They have to be aggressive. I mean, look at them. They only grow up to 30 inches in length. They're so tiny, but again, they're so aggressive. They only grow up to 30 inches in length, so they have to be, you know? These ones don't tap dance. They actually crump battle you. Yeah, they embarrass you in front of you and your kin. Chin straps are small and quick because their diet requires them to be. With krill wading 50 miles offshore, chin strap penguins have quite the commute. Their thick skin is also quite literal. Their blubber keeps them warm during these long commutes. As long as no leopard seals show up, their commute is pretty smooth sailing. Number six, the sea spider. Okay, we had a few ha-has with the penguins. Now it's time to get weird. Now we know why we're here. The sea spider, thankfully, is not an actual spider. It just looks like one, kind of like daddy long legs. This is a daddy cold legs. It's a marine anthropod, and the reason it's so haunting to look at is because of polar gigantism. Many species have this. Their climate being so harsh, lack of nutrients, lack of sunlight, friends, family, etc. Scientists believe it's because sea spiders have slowed down their metabolism, so much so they require a small amount of oxygen to survive. So over time, the oxygen around these sea spiders turn them into like Captain America. They just juice them up. They take on way more than they're adapted to. And in turn, we get giant terrifying sea bugs. Nice. Number five, scale worms. Upon first glance, again, scale worms look microscopic. They look like tiny bacteria that are covered in scales. Hairy, weird, gross scales. They're pretty horrifying to look at. These guys are actually eight inches long on average, so they're not tiny at all. This is what they really look like. The Antarctic scale worm is covered with elytra, these natural bristles. But the most distracting feature here has to be its mouth, head, mouth thing, yeah. This part on its mouth can literally fully retract. It can go inside out, yeah. It can suck its own mouth inside of its body, and then when it's time to eat, it pops out and then claws its prey to pieces. Horrible. I saw a video of it, I almost threw up. We went from happy feet to retractable mandibles. Cheers, that's how we do it here on MA. Number four, glass sponges. Antarctic glass sponges. They don't get their name because they're translucent, they get their name because their skeletons contains silica, which is a literal component of glass. How neat is that? Back in 2013, a massive discovery took place. Scientists figured out how these glass sponges grow in size. Well, they figured out that they do grow in general. As our ice shelves slowly disappear, the numbers of glass sponge sightings they increase. They don't hunt down prey at all, obviously. They spend their entire life quite still, just eating the leftovers that happen to drift along their merry way. Their food was so sparse as well, for a long time it was fully believed they couldn't possibly grow. Because what would they possibly eat? The more we learn about glass sponges, the better, because these little guys tell us a lot about climate change. We're like, how is it happening? What's going on? Nothing's happening. We're, they don't talk much. They're really quiet. They don't have mouths or eyes. Number three, the springtail. Also known as the elephants of Antarctica, springtails are hexapods. They're exclusively land animals. Whereas penguins, they sometimes, you know, bop and swim. These guys are only on land. They're tiny as well. They measure up to about a millimeter on average. They look like earwigs almost. Ice earwigs that eat bacteria. 
horrible. They got a big old butt too, so you're probably gonna notice if you see one walking by. They live on average one to two years, and they produce glycerol, which helps them, you know, not freeze to death. That always helps. Antarctic springtails live longer than springtails in other parts of the world because the frigid temperatures, again, slows their metabolism down so much they can just survive off basically nothing. They're not immortal, but as far as ice insects go, they're, they're close, they're pretty mighty. Small but mighty. Number two, the hoff crab. When these creatures get their names, it's often in relation to their appearance or their super ability. The immortal jellyfish ages in reverse. The glass octopus is otherwise see-through. The hoff crab gets its name because it looks hairy, like David Hasselhoff. He's hairy as well. Yeah, David Hasselhoff just tweeted the hoff crab with this photo. So random, imagine following him and you see this, you're like, what's going on, why? We love it. The scientific name later given was Kiwa Tyleri, appropriately named after its discoverer, Paul Tyler, from Southampton University. Found in the East Scotia Ridge on the Southern Ocean, where the water is too cold for the hoff crab, these guys are just covered in bacteria, hence their hairy hoff look, because it spends so much time staying warm near hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. The guy literally just sits around a deep sea campfire just collecting ice cold bacteria. What a, what a wild life. He's a deep sea hairy caveman, essentially. When it comes time to eat, the hoff crab just scrapes off a little bit of bacteria from any part and then just gives himself more food. He gives himself a little haircut salad. We love those. And finally coming in number one, the colossal squid. Not to be confused with the giant squid, those are similar but smaller. Still terrifying but more petite. As its name gives away, the colossal squid is much larger. They live in the darkest, coldest depths surrounding the waters of Antarctica, and these squids, on average, they're around 46 feet in length, but the females being the largest of the species. The biggest and baddest, of course. They have large tentacles with suckers equipped with razor hooks, so whatever it does grab, it's certainly not letting go anytime soon. Its diet consists of large fish, and when I say large, I'm referring to, you know, seven foot long Patagonian toothfish, not a goldfish. They're colossal, and they try and fight whales sometimes. They're crazy. They have no regard for the size of others. They're gonna fight anything and everyone. They're more often than not marked up, suggesting they've been in a few deep sea tussles. On top of being magnificent, they're quite mysterious. Only two specimens have ever been collected, with the second being recent in 2014. Some believe this is the closest living relative to the Kraken. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off below. Either way, I'm gonna go throw up. I never want to see any of these in real life. Awesome. Number 10, a giant hole. And by giant, I mean two thirds the area of Manhattan and nearly a thousand feet tall, large enough to have once held 15 billion tons of ice. Beneath the Thwaites Glacier in West Antarctica, there is a gap between the glacier and the bedrock that was discovered only recently by NASA scientists. Much of the void, as they are calling it, is a result of the melting that has occurred over the last few years. According to Eric Rigneau, scientists had suspected that the Thwaites Glacier was not attached to the bedrock beneath it. This void in the ice has helped reveal to researchers how much the ground has shifted between 1992 to 2017 and continues to lead to more discoveries and who knows what's next. Number nine, super seals. I'm very glad that I will never know what it's like to survive in the perilous and unforgiving icy tundra that is Antarctica. Especially since you need to be a super seal to survive there. Weddell seals had researchers perplexed for a while because they have an uncanny ability of knowing where the gaps in the ice are so they can come up for air. Weddell seals can dive down hundreds of meters while hunting and still find their way up to breathing holes with ease. After years of study in 2014, the National Science Foundation announced the apparent cause. They may have a sixth sense and no, it's not that they can see other dead seals. By using the Earth's magnetic field as a natural GPS, these seals are able to find the openings in the ice. Still crazy to me. So not only are they adorable, incredible divers and hunters, they can predict where they need to go in order to survive, which is insane to me. Number eight, glass sponges. No, they aren't actually made of glass, but the reason they are called that is because of the fact that their skeletons contain silica, which is a component of glass. They act as filters and basically pick up any food that passes by and can live for centuries. They don't only grow in Antarctica, but they seem to be playing a very curious role in the area. Ever since ice shells began disappearing due to global warming, the appearance of glass sponges has increased. There seems to be a correlation between the two and scientists are trying to work out what the exact cause is. If they figure it out, they will not only be able to understand the ecology better, but also understand how these creatures store carbon. This could help researchers understand some of the key components behind climate change, so it is definitely a mystery worth solving. Number seven, a perfect 
rectangle. Now, usually when someone says icebergs, first you think of the Titanic, rest in peace, and two, you might imagine them looking massive and jagged and the whole metaphor of like, there's so much going on beneath. But NASA spotted one that caused a couple furrowed brows. It was perfectly rectangular. This type of iceberg actually has a name and they are called tabular icebergs. They have steep, nearly vertical sides and a flat top. They spotted what was essentially a massive ice sheet cake while doing a routine aerial survey. NASA tweeted the reason for this anomaly and said, the iceberg's sharp angles and flat surface indicate that it probably recently calved from the ice shelf. The rectangular ice sheet itself is so massive that if it were to melt, the amount of water could fill every swimming pool in California several times over. Crazy. That just goes to show how much water is actually in Antarctica. Number six, a lava lake. And no, I didn't say lava cake, but boy do I wish I did. But it is still surprising that somewhere tucked beneath all of that ice there is a pool of lava? What? On Saunders Island there lives one of eight lava lakes found in the world. Scientists from the University College London and the British Antarctic Survey discovered the lake on the island due to thermal imaging from satellite data. They caught images of the volcano of Mount Michel and noticed a lake of lava sitting within its crater around 700 feet in diameter. The temperature reads at around 1812 to 2334 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 989 or 1279 degrees Celsius which I guess isn't that surprising because it's lava. It's the hottest thing ever. But despite lava bubbling and volcanoes being a very common image associated with volcanoes, there have actually only been eight ever seen. For the most part, lava dries into rock, which is the case with most of the 1500 volcanoes on the earth. So why, especially in such a cold climate, does this one stay molten? Scientists presume it's due to a combination of gases and steam that kind of lock in the heat, but they need to get a closer look, which could take years. Number five, green icebergs. Actual green and they're jade green. Green icebergs are a weird phenomenon that probably doesn't suit the default image of icebergs in your brain. All the way back to the 18th century, green icebergs have raised many questions and have even had myths built around them. For over 200 years, the mystery of why they happen is finally close to being solved. A research team at the University of Washington believe they have the answer to their unusual hue. Usually icebergs appear white and light blue because of the water, but now Stephen Warren has a new theory and it relates to the same explanation for Blood Falls from our last video, which by the way, if you haven't watched it, go do that now. He believes that iron oxides are responsible for changing the color. Iron oxides are the same compound that create red brown rust. When they react to oxygen, the iron oxides change the color of the ice. If this study is proven, this could also explain where phytoplankton get their nutrients from and therefore explain how the whole ecosystem works. So very interesting. Number four, creepy creatures. Researchers from the British Antarctic Survey were investigating the Filkner Rhone ice shelf and were set on getting a sample of the sediment core. While drilling around 900 meters through the shelf, the drill hit a rock. But not only that, the camera attached to the drill caught a wealth of creatures latched onto the rock. These creatures, who probably haven't seen the light of day for thousands of years, were suddenly there making scientists' jaws drop to the floor. Animals similar to sponges were attached, but this discovery opened up all new ideas about life on Earth. These creatures are supposed to rely on food to drift past in order to survive, but these ones are stationary and they are 1500 kilometers upstream from the closest source of photosynthesis. How are they getting their nutrients and where? Number three, Shackleton's lost ship. Somewhere trapped by mountains of ice is the Endurance. In 1915, Sir Ernest Shackleton along with his crew had to abandon ship when the Endurance slipped beneath the Weddell Sea. The frozen water crushed the hull, so the crew escaped towards South Georgia Island in lifeboats. They traveled 720 nautical miles before they were rescued and left the Endurance where it continues to endure beneath the waves. The idea of recovering the ship has captivated the minds and hearts of seafaring historians and archaeologists for decades. Finally, a UK led expedition attempted to relieve the ship of its glacial prison in 2019. They made a harrowing attempt but sadly came back with 
nothing. They sent a submarine to the ocean floor to look for the sunken polar yacht, but sadly, the water took that too. They lost contact with it. One of the expedition members stated, Like Shackleton before us, who described the graveyard of endurance as the worst portion of the worst sea in the world, our well laid plans were overcome by the rapidly moving ice and what Shackleton called the evil conditions of the Weddell Sea. Number two, the anomaly. Somewhere beneath the frozen wasteland of Wilkes Land in Antarctica, there is something that could change our entire understanding of history. The area they are most curious about is 151 miles across and dives 2,700 feet deep. The most common hypothesis for what is under there is a massive asteroid, and not the one I previously mentioned that blew up before it hit last video. This asteroid is twice the size of the one that destroyed the dinosaurs. If it is indeed beneath the ice, it could be the asteroid that caused the Permian Triassic extinction event which killed 96% of Earth's sea creatures. Of course, other ideas of what the object could be extend to a massive UFO, and even a portal to a mysterious underworld called the Hollow Earth. The reason scientists believe there is something is due to what is called the Wilkes Land Gravity Anomaly, first discovered in 2006. NASA spotted gravitational changes which indicate an object of immense size. The biggest clue that it is an asteroid is the fact it's sitting in a 300 mile wide crater. So that makes sense. Whether or not you agree is up to you until the day we finally uncover it, but we can all at least agree that something is down there. But what exactly? Who knows? Number one. Aliens and Atlantis. Antarctica looks like a secret, lying in wait beneath the cold, hard ice and unforgiving mountains. So it's no wonder how year after year dozens of people across the earth report UFO sightings on Google Maps and strange snow patterns belonging to ancient beings. Despite its freezing temperatures, this place is a hot spot for conspiracies and mysteries, including those that believe the lost city of Atlantis is somewhere tucked away. Perhaps the massive unknown object Object beneath the crater is in fact just that, a lost city. After all, as I mentioned in part one, Antarctica used to be a tropical oasis before it froze over, who and what got left behind? Though it is highly likely that a civilization would have thrived here, scientists still haven't found any proof that one did, let alone anything that points to Atlantis. Just like the ocean, we have barely scratched the surface on what we know about this vast icy tundra and we'll probably never really know. Mm -hmm.